Hey everyone, it's Melissa. It is Tuesday afternoon. I'm filming upstairs. Um, I do have to say this video is a bit of an experiment. I don't have the lighting the way I like it yet. I'm just going to go ahead and do this video, but uh, I know it's I know the lighting isn't very good. <clears throat> I'm still working on it. I've got one more light. I've got a light ordered that uh, I've studied and they read. I've read and they said that this is a good light for you to have. I'm going to try that. If I'm still getting what I'm seeing now, then I'll just go downstairs and film. Uh, go back downstairs and film on a sunny day between two and four in the afternoon because that's the only time I can I can do it. The bad thing about filming is down there is we have awnings, and so I have to you know do my face kind of up like that to be able to catch a little bit of sun that comes through uh, underneath the awning. So anyway, enough complaining. Um, I've got. A lipstick tag to do. I was tagged by the uh, very beautiful, very lovely Uppies Beads 59 Tammy. Tammy, thank you so much for tagging me. It was such a fun one to do. Uh, I think lipstick just can really add so much to your face, um, as well as eyeshadow, but it can just, uh, you know, it can brighten up your look. It can. Um, you know, give you a sexy look with a pale lip and a dark eye, or a bold lip uh, with a, a neutral eye, and you can just do so many things with the lipstick. So I really have enjoyed it, and I appreciate you tagging me. <clears throat> I've got two things to do. I'm going to uh, do the lipstick tag, and then I've got a story that, I don't know, it just felt like I wanted to tell you this story, but I'm going to do it at the very end after the lipstick tag. So that people that don't want to watch it, you know, they can just go ahead and turn it off. It's a story about a horse. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with the questions. Um, the first one is favorite balmer treatment. Uh, I don't ever, ever do anything fancy. I usually just will do Vaseline when my lips get chapped. Or the, uh, I like the Nivea Lip Butters. I like this one and Raspberry Rose Kiss. They are creamy but still very not quite Vaseline-y but still I'm still <laughs> my light is still bad let me get a little closer and see if that helps okay uh, but still uh, not too not too uh, Vaseline-y but but very uh, moisturizing and in the winter time when your lips get really chapped I just every night before we go to bed Doug and I put on Vaseline uh, the next one, best eye catching red. I usually don't wear reds, but I did at Christmas time, and in fact, I even did a video on it. And uh, it's the Maybelline 14 Hour Lipstick in Ravishing Rouge. It's a beautiful red. I think it might be a little on the warm red side. It looks kind of blue red there, but in person, it looks a little more on the warm side. So that is a very, very beautiful um, red. Uh, best luxury, um, I've got two. The first one is uh, Chanel Rouge Allure in 90. And it is gorgeous. Just beautiful. And it's just kind of a, uh, kind of a coral color. It's very, very, very beautiful. And the other one is the um, Tom Ford in New Vanilla. Oh. oh, so beautiful. I just love it. It's gorgeous. I really like it. Okay, the next, uh, and the next part of that is the um, Best Dugs Drugstore. I have been so impressed with the Wet n Wild. Uh, I've got, this one right here is, I got number 505A. I think this is one of the ones that Elle recommended. And then the other one um, that I really like, another drugstore, is the Revlon Cupcake. Oh, it's a gorgeous, 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 gorgeous color. Just a real bubblegummy Barbie one. Love it. Very pretty for summer. Really nice. Okay. Uh, Revlon, uh, best drugstore. Okay, number four. Best MAC lipsticks. I don't wear like MAC lipsticks. I have one, two. One I don't like, but I still have it. So 
what I'm going to do, the lipsticks probably that I use the most are Lancome. Uh, I really like Lancome lipsticks. They're, I feel, when I go to the Lancome counter and I see them all there, I just think they're so beautiful and they just, I don't know, they, they really suit me and they wear real well and um, we've gone through, the sales person and I have gone through all the ingredients and they don't have any gluten in them at all. <clears throat> so my best uh, Lancome lipstick, I have it on today. It is number, <clears throat> it's Rouge and Love number 322. And it is a coral color. I'll put it there. But I have it on, I have it on today too. Just a gorgeous color. Okay, um, also this was one I just discovered it's in a giveaway and it's called, uh, it's a Lancome call, it's one of their color designs and it's called Poodle Skirt. Very beautiful. I love that. I have to say, I'm going to go back one uh, to the best drugstores and I didn't know where to put this, so I'm going to put it with the drugstore. I've been thinking about it because it's, it's not, I don't think it's considered a luxury, but it's not considered a drugstore. And that's a Mary Kay lipsticks, especially in the one called Dusty Rose. I really, really, I have worn that so much. I can't tell you. I always keep a tube, and I don't know how many tubes I've gone through, but I really like this one. Okay, uh, number five, the most disappointing. Well, that would have to be a MAC lipstick. And I think that's one of the reasons... Well, MAC, MAC lipsticks are not gluten free, but I think it's one of the reasons why I never really bought, I bought one other MAC lipstick is that I just didn't care for this one. Um, it looks like it would be beautiful, but I just didn't like it on me. And it's just one of the most things that when you put on a lipstick and you, you've paid, you know, good money for it and you put it on and you think that that's not me. I don't like it. It's a little disappointing. Number six. Liner, yes or no? I oh, definitely let yes. Um, I think the liner is just like a picture frame. You know, you can define your lips. You can uh, just really, really make your lips stand out and, and prepare it for the color. I have two liners that I really love. Ironically, I like, like MAC liners. And my favorite one is the uh, Spice. right there. And what I do when I wear nudes, when I just put on a nude, nude without anything, it, I feel like it doesn't give me enough color. Uh, so what I do is I will line my lips and then fill them in with the Spice uh, liner and uh, especially like the Nude Vanilla or um, another one that I use that's a nude all the time. Uh, I just feel like it, it gives me just the right amount of color. And then for the pinks, I like to wear East End Snob Rimmel. And you've got to be a little careful rolling it up because it's a kind of a soft liner. And do you know what? I really have a gripe with uh, makeup companies. I do not know why they have, why all of them haven't gone to ones that you roll up. Uh, it would just, well, I guess maybe they want you to sharpen it and use it more. I don't know. But uh, it's nothing, it's so frustrating. Like, I'll get ready to go someplace and I'm in a hurry. Or maybe I'm going to go into a store or something right now and I'll look and, and I'll see, um, you know, like, I need to kind of touch up my eyeliner. So, I'll get out my eyeliner and, you know, start to maybe do something inside the, uh, the tight line or uh, the rim. And it just scratches me because it's wood because it needs to be sharpened. Then the same with your lips. I'll get ready to, you know, fill in my lips all over and I don't have enough left without sharpening it. And it's just... I'm taking wood and scratching it over, so I just really, I do not know why they don't all go to roll up. I, 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 they could, and make things easier for us, so, yeah, you know, they could care less what I think, but that's what I think. Best gloss. I do not use gloss. I do not like it on me. I get my liner on, I get my lipstick on, I get my look set just right, and so I'll put gloss on it even in the middle and it just kind of messes it up it blurs it out to me so for me i do not like gloss but i see it on others and oh it's just so beautiful it really really is pretty and uh you know i wish i could wear it because i think it maybe would brighten up my eyes or something but it, i don't like it on me but i like it so much on others okay something extra 
I've got two something extras. Uh, the first one is a company called, and I've mentioned them several times before, called Three Custom, uh, Three Custom Color. Uh, they do, you know, like, like when you run out of your um, your eyeshadow that, and they, they don't make it anymore, or it was a limited edition of your eyeshadows or your blushes or your lips, and there's nothing more frustrating. So what you can do is take a little bit of it that's left and like put it in a baggie and send it to them, and they will make a, they will duplicate it. They, and then once they get the get it and make up their formula and everything, they keep it on file. So you always have it there. So I have done that with the, um, and I use it all the time, the, uh, the Estee Lauder Rose Amethyst that was a limited edition a couple of years ago. And I keep this lipstick, I wear it over the, uh, there it is, it's very light, it's hard to see. I wear it over the MAC Lip Liner and Spice, and it's, it's a look that I really, really, like a whole lot and I have worn it in videos over and over and over again. I really really like that so <clears throat> that's a little something extra. And also I think the best gluten free or one of the best gluten free cosmetic companies is one called Red Apple Lipstick. Now they don't uh, only sell lipstick, they sell eyeshadows and uh, eye bases and lip and lip liners and lipsticks and I'm not sure, I think foundations too and just all kinds of makeup and it is all gluten free. So you never ever have to worry about anything like that. And the three colors that I have bought and I like, and I've bought all their eyeshadows and they are as good as, uh, as MAC. And they last and they feel like MAC. They even fit in the same little circle things that uh, MAC palettes. Uh, the first one is Oh My Guava. You know what, let me start over here. The first one is Oh My Guava there. Kind of a nude. And the next one is uh, Coral Crush, which is going to be coral. So pretty. And don't have to worry about getting sick. And the next one is Crush on Me. And this is their pink. One of their pinks. They've got a big selection. I'll try to put their link below and I'll try to put uh, the three custom color link below in case there are anything that's been discontinued that you want to get them to make for you. And also I'm going to link a bunch of people below, uh, tag a bunch of people below and do their links. You may have already done it. In fact, uh, I saw Elle had done it, which I was going to do, and Miss Crystal, which I was going to do. So I I won't put, well, I'll put their links again anyway. I don't care. Uh, but, uh, and some of you, you may not do, uh, do want to do it, or you, you know, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to, but I just wanted to tag a bunch of people anyway. And uh, anybody that I, even I don't mention, just, you know, everybody wants to do this tag. It's so much fun, so please do it. It's really a lot of fun. So if you're signing off right now, then, um, Thank you so much for watching, and I appreciate it. Okay, if you're still with me, here's a story about a horse. And the reason it reminded me of it was this week, uh, they had the Belmont Stakes, and a horse, California Chrome, was trying for the Triple Crown and did not make it. Now, as well as being a Tennessee girl, uh, I'm also a Kentucky girl. Uh, I, I grew up in Tennessee, and that's why I've got my uh, kind of you know, even south of where I live now, and uh, that's where my accent came from. But in high school and college, I lived in Kentucky. So uh, that's where I met my first husband. And so she, uh, so he and I went to Lexington to school to college. So uh, while I was there, I got very, very interested in horse racing. Uh, one premier racetrack there is Keeneland. And uh, I really, really enjoyed going. Uh, it, it's the, it was the kind of place back then that you could look at the horses up close and you could talk to these famous jockeys that you'd read about. It was really a lot of fun. And I, I got a book and I, I got a system and, you know, I would study the track and study the horses and how well they did running at certain lengths and on this type of track. And so I kind of got really good at picking the horses. So I would just, you know, Place, place little two dollar bets, but but I always won, you know, I did real good, so I got really, really interested in it. So after school,
school, I started working for a TV station in Lexington. And so, one day, one of my co-workers came in and said to a couple of us, uh, get in the car, I want to take you outside of Lexington and to a horse farm, and I want to show you this horse. So, uh, we asked our boss, and he said, yeah, okay, there's not much going on, I'll go with you. So we piled in the car, and so we, uh, he knew the owner of the farm, and so we, we drove up, and, and he showed us this horse. Uh, it was out in, in its special pasture and stuff, and so I looked at this horse, and it was the most beautiful horse I had ever seen in my whole life. It was a chestnut color, beautiful, it was huge, it was huge, beautiful, beautiful muscles, uh, just took your breath away. And I saw he would start running around a little bit, and uh, I knew he was something. And the name of the horse was Secretariat. So I always considered myself very, very lucky. And it brought it back when I saw the triple running for the Triple Crown, because of course he won it, one of the greatest, greatest horses that ever was. But I remember feeling that day like I had seen an athlete. I had seen one of the top athletes. And at the time, maybe ever, one of the top horses, maybe ever, uh, that had ever lived. And uh, one of the top athletes, man or animal. I want to do a link uh, below of when he won the Belmont Stakes and how he was just such a magnificent horse. Watching that race for the Triple Crown just reminded me that uh, I actually got to, uh, to see one of the greatest horses that had ever lived. And I... Uh, I never will forget that. It was one of the most beautiful sights that I'd seen. So that's my horse story. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully next time my lighting will be better. Um, if not, then we'll go back downstairs again. And thanks again for watching. Love you all. Bye-bye.